Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing the RX 6700 XT. It won't be long until AMD finally reveal this card in all of its glory, but I've actually heard performance targets which are now updated, as well as the pricing of the GPU. And it's going to be either 47999 or 49999. I have to say that this is actually more expensive than what I was originally led to believe earlier this year. I was hearing that the pricing target was somewhere around 429 US dollars or roughly about the price that we were seeing the RX 5700 XT launch in. So obviously this is more expensive than the MSRP of the card that it essentially does replace. Although it is worth noting, of course, that in terms of performance, the RX 6700 XT is faster. And this is actually a point I want to get to. If you've been following along with the channel for a while, you'll know that even since I was uh, first leaking all of the RDNA 2 details, I was saying that I was hearing that the RX uh, 6700 XT was a bit faster than the RTX 3060 Ti. However, one of my other sources has told me that this information is probably out of date. And in fact, it could be closer to the RTX 3070, at least in terms of traditional rasterization performance. At the end of the day, I'm not as confident in this as I was some of my earlier leaks in the performance targets of the RX 6800 XT and the 6900 XT. Although if the pricing information is uh, correct, which is again 500-ish US dollars for the reference cards, then you have to imagine that the performance targets have to be about on par with the RTX 3070 because otherwise AMD charging this for this GPU just doesn't make any sense. I'll also say that, of course, well, for those who don't want to get the standard, you know, kind of reference design, you're going to be paying probably more. I'm even hearing 600 US dollars for some cards, probably more than that, to be honest. And, and as I was saying in another recent video, the thing is too that AMD are actually selling the kits to um, AIBs. And by the way, just to stress, this is not every AIB, but they're selling the kits to AIBs at a price where they could, technically speaking, release the GPU at... Um, well, basically reference prices, but instead they're using those um, those uh, kits to create GPUs which are way more expensive that, so that the AIB itself can have way more margin, but this margin doesn't go to AMD. So it's like, imagine if you sell me a product for like five bucks, expecting me to mark it up to let's say seven, but instead, because the buyer market is just insane at this point in time, I instead mark it up to, let's like, say, 10. Now, again, I'm just using those figures as an example. They're not reflective as the prices, of course, that AMD, in terms of percentages, that uh, AMD would be selling the uh, product to the AIBs at. But I'm just giving it as an example in terms of how this is kind of operating behind the scenes. Another possibility, if these prices are right, is that just because of the global shortages that are going on right now, and of course it's not just the 7nm capacity at TSMC, but it's just everything, this is another reason possibly we're seeing a higher pricing. And again, it is worth noting that according to a report from Cal Cutland, this card is going to be very short in supply. It was said that there's going to be like 100 models or something like that available in France, that is reference design. So basically, I would suggest that uh, it's going to be a real pain in the butt to actually procure one of these GPUs. And now let's move on to another subject of AMD, and this is Genoa. There's actually been ridiculous numbers of leaks recently for Zen 4, and one of those, of course, is that Genoa is going to go up to 96 cores, supports 12-channel memory, and also PCIe Gen 5 support, as well as perhaps the most amusing thing of all for me, the fact that the uh, chip itself is going to be on an LGA 6096 package. Uh, covered this more extensively in yesterday's video. But there's been another leak, actually, and this is courtesy of Patrick Skier on Twitter, he says that the package is 72mm by 75.4mm, but we also have a leak on chip hell. 
And here you'll notice it says upwards of 64 cores per socket, two threads per core, two sockets max. Apparently this does come from an older leak, but critically you'll notice AVX 3, 512, as well as support for B Float 16. So if you do some Googling, I'm almost positive, and this is from memory, uh, but I'm almost positive that AVX 512 was a leak which actually dates back even to Zen 3, but obviously that was not the case. However, I did some checking with my sources and apparently the AVX 512 is a thing for Zen 4, but what is less clear is if it's going to be in desktop parts. Now this is speculation on my part, I stress speculation, Probably speaking, AMD are yet to decide the exact feature set between desktop server and high performance desktop, i.e. Threadripper, because obviously there is like that product segmentation where they may reduce the number of PCIe lanes or they'll adjust, for example, what instructions the CPU can handle and so on and so on. And this is for multiple reasons whether it comes down to cost or just being able to kind of put some type of segmentation in the market. Now, if I had to guess, I would probably say that AVX 512 will not be in Ryzen 7000 processors. Again, this is a guess, this is not based upon a leak. And if I were AMD and I were kind of looking at this from actually milking the money the best I could from this chip and architecture, it may even be that lower performance thread, I say lower performance in the loosest possible sense, but you know, the regular Threadripper platform as we have currently Threadripper and Threadripper Pro, but I might guess that the, you know, the regular Threadripper doesn't have support for AVX 512, but maybe the Pro version does. I also want to add that the executable fix has decided to provide even more details to Zen 4 and uh, Genoa, is going to have an IOD, which is obviously the IO die on the uh, on the package, which is 396.64 mm squared, whereas the Zen 4 CCD, which again is eight cores per CCD, that is going to measure about 72 mm squared. To put that into some context, this is actually slightly smaller than both the Zen 2 chiplets as well as the IOD that we found in Rome slash Milan, which I have to say is kind of bonkers. According as well to executable fix, the Genoa mock-up is actually based on photos that they've received, so I'm assuming it's fairly accurate. Also, real quick, um, there was an article doing the rounds and people were panicking on Twitter regarding the PlayStation 5 allegedly being able to mine Ethereum really quite quickly, but this almost certainly is fake. Courtesy to videocards.com actually for debunking this, so I'll link their Twitter account in the description, which is where they posted this. If you use the QR code, it says, and I quote, there is no software, ha 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 ha. Yeah, so basically this is almost certainly fake. Now, if they were to be able to run mining software on the PlayStation 5, I imagine that they would have actually been able to hack the console. And basically that probably would mean that they would essentially have unfettered access to executing code on the system, i.e. that would probably mean that they could run like pirate games and all of that stuff. And I just don't think that uh, we're anywhere near that stage of the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X to have that to have that level of control. So again, I just want to throw this into the video just to say that it, you know, it, it's almost certainly a fake. Hopefully though, you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then definitely subscribe to the channel because there'll be a couple of very big exclusives popping up on the channel over the next week or so. I'm just getting the final details before I put them out. And also, apologies for not being on camera. I managed to do an oopsie today and, uh, well, I managed to fall down some stairs. <laughs> Let's just say that. I'm okay. I just managed to bang myself uh, right on the nose and uh, also managed to uh, smack my shin. And yeah, it, it wasn't the best day. Let's just put it that way. But I'm all okay. Nothing's broken or anything like that. But I've uh, had an absolute killer headache for most of the day. So... Um, it's a bit of a lighter day for me. However, I should be on camera tomorrow, but I'll probably be a bit bruised and battered. But hopefully the first of uh, exclusives will be up tomorrow. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.